Hey everyone, Andy welcome back to the channel. Today, we're a tackling a serious but incredibly important topic. How to survive in the freezing cold when things go south. Imagine this, your car breaks down on a remote winter road, or a simple day hike turns into an unexpected overnight ordeal in the snow. It sounds like something out of a movie, but it happens. Knowing a few key principles can genuinely be the difference between a scary story to tell and a tragic headline. So, let's dive into the essential skills to keep you warm and safe when everything goes wrong. First things first, let's talk about the single biggest enemy in this situation, panic. When you're cold, scared, and isolated, your mind can naze, leading to bad decisions. The very first thing you need to do is stop. Seriously, just stop moving, take a deep breath, and calm your thoughts. This isn't just fluffy advice. It's a survival tactic. Panicking burns precious energy, which your body needs to generate heat. It also clouds your judgment when you need it most. So, take a moment, assess your situation. Where are you? What resources do you have? What are the immediate threats? Answering these questions calmly is your first victory against the cold. Once you've calmed down, your next priority is to stay dry. Water is your worst enemy in a cold weather survival scenario. It pulls heat away from your body to approximately my times faster than air. This means getting wet from snow, rain, or even your own sweat is incredibly dangerous. If you're already wet, you need to address it immediately. If you have any dry clothes, change into them. Even a slightly damp base layer can be a huge problem. If you don't have a change of clothes, do whatever you can to wring out your current ones and try to air them out, even if it's just for a few minutes. Staying dry is non-negotiable. It's the foundation of staying warm. Now, let's talk about insulation. This is where your clothing becomes your personal survival shelter. The key principle is layering. Multiple thin layers are far more effective than one single thick one. Why? Because the air trap between each layer acts as an insulator, holding your body heat close. Sink to fit light a thermos. Ideally, you want a wicking base layer to pull sweat away from your skin, a warm mid-layer light fleece or wool to insulate, and a waterproof, windproof outer shell to protect you from the elements. A hat is absolutely crucial you can lose a an enormous amount of body heat through your head. Same goes for gloves and get socks. Never wear cotton as your base layer. Cotton absorbs moisture and holds it against your skin, which is the exact opposite of what you want. Okay, you've calmed down, you're dry, and you're layered up. Your next move is to find or build a shelter. Your goal is to get out of the wind and create a smaller, protected space that your body heat can warm up. If your car is nearby, it's an excellent shelter. It keeps you out of the wind and the snow. Do not run the engine for heat unless you're certain the exhaust pipe is completely clear of snow. A block pipe can fill the car with deadly carbon monoxide. If you're in the wilderness, look for natural shelters first. A rat overhang, a dense cluster of evergreen trees, or a fallen log can provide significant protection. If you can't find anything, you might need to build one. A simple snow trench or a snow cave, if you have the time and the energy, can be incredibly effective. The snow itself is a great insulator. Just make sure to create a small ventilation hole to allow fresh air in. Now let's talk about generating heat. Your body is a furnace, and it needs fuel. That means you need calories. If you have any food with you, now is the time to eat it. Especially high energy foods like nuts, chocolate, or energy bars. Don't ration your emergency food too strictly in the beginning. Your body needs that energy now to fight the cold. If you don't have food, don't despair. Your primary heat source is still your own body. Stay active, but don't overexcite yourself to the point of sweating. Simple exercises like jumping jacks, squats, or just dancing and relaxing your muscles can generate a surprising amount of warmth. If you're with someone else, huddle together. Shedding body heat is a time-tested survival technique. What about fire? A fire is a massive psychological boost and an obvious source of heat and a way to signal for help. However, starting a fire in a wet, cold environment can be extremely difficult, even for experienced outdoors people. If you have a lighter or waterproof matches and get tinder, absolutely go for it. But don't waste all your energy trying to start a fire if the conditions are impossible. Your focus should be on the things you can control. Shelter, insulation, and staying dry. A fire is a bonus, not your only hope. Conserve your energy for the things that have the highest chance of success. Let's quickly cover signaling. If you're in a situation where a rescue is possible, you need to make yourself visible. If you're near your car, turn on the hazard lights and pop the hood. During the day, bright colors are your friend. A brightly colored jacket or a piece of gear laid out in an open area can be spotted from the air. A signal mirror or any reflective surface can flash sunlight at potential rescuers. At night, a flashlight or your phone's light can be a beacon. Three if anything is the universal signal for distress three whistle blasts, three flashes of light, three piles of rock. Make yourself be and the obvious. 
One final, critical point, stay hydrated. It might seem counterintuitive when it's cold, but your body needs water to function properly, and that includes generating heat. Dehydration thickens your blood, making it harder for your heart to pump warm blood to your extremities. Eating snow is a last resort, as it lowers your core body temperature. If you have tea, melt it first. If you have a fire, great. If not, put it in a water bottle and keep it inside your jacket, letting your body heat melt it slowly. Staying hydrated is just as important as staying warm. So, let's recap the core principles. 1. Stop and desync. Don't panic. 2. Stay dry at all costs. Water is the enemy. 3. Insulate with layers, especially your head. 4. Find or build a shelter to get out of the wine. 5. Fuel your body and stay active without sweating. 6. Signal for help if you can. Following these steps can turn a life-threatening situation into a manageable one. It's about making a series of smart, deliberate decisions to conserve energy and the heat until help arrives or the situation improves. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you never have to use this information, but knowing it can empower you and give you a fighting chance. Stay safe out sir, be prepared, and always respect the power of mother nature. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more content to keep you safe and prepared on your adventures. See you in the next one.